Hello students, this is the first in a series of lectures that I hope will help you in your understanding of evolution as you learn it this semester. Um, the first topic that we're going to talk about is shared ancestry. Um, before we get to the actual ancestry part, we have to talk about uh, the fact that evolution is a theory. So in science, theory means that it is an explanation and it is supported by evidence. And what the explanation of evolution explains is pretty much everything. So you can show our, our age here, but back in the day we had Clarissa explains it all, and in biology we have evolution explains it all. So evolution explains the variability of life on Earth. This means similarities between species, differences between species, um, the distribution of species, and the change in um, the species and their characteristics over time. So shared ancestry is actually an underlying assumption of evolution. So it means that we assume that all organisms at some point shared a common ancestor. This isn't really a yes or no question of did we share a common ancestor, um, all these organisms, because we're assuming yes. But what we look at is to what extent do we have a recent common ancestor? So evidence for shared ancestry um, is actually the evidence of how evolution works as a theory. So it supports it as a functional explanation and we can use it to understand and predict things into the future. One of the major um, pieces of evidence that we use to suggest shared ancestry or more recent shared ancestry um, are homologous structures. So homologous structures have the same shape, makeup, or material, so what they're actually made of, um, what we call organization, which means where are they at in relation to other structures in the body. Development, which is like embryo development for humans, for example, so development within their lifetime. Um, and it's important to note that often homologous structures do have the same function, but they do not have to. So in the picture here, you can see that all of these um, limb structures have very similar organization. Um, from the picture, you can't tell what they're made of, but you can see that the structures, the shapes are very similar to all of them. Um, and so we're, we're gathering evidence here just through the picture that these are definitely going to be homologous. Analogous structures, on the other hand, um, have similar functions, but they don't meet any of the other criteria for homology. Um, they can tell us some interesting information about the advantage of certain traits like mobility, um, so for example, a bird wing and an insect wing would be analogous um, because if you look at it here, bird wings have, are made of bone, so the material is different. Um, they are different in relation to their proportion to the body. So we're starting to reject things that would make them homologous. Um, the only thing we're left with is flight, which is very important, um, but only suggests analogous structures. Um, and the last major structure we look at often is vestigial. So vestigial structures are actually a subset of homologous structures. So basically you're looking at something that in one organism is reduced in size um, and usually reduced in function or has a different function. So an example here is the pelvic bone of a whale. Um, and the pelvic bone is where a hind limb would come off of a skeleton. Um, and so this suggests to us, uh, the only real uh, plausible explanation is that at some point, the whale was related to an ancestor that had a use for this. Um, and so that this structure actually continued on to um, an actual limb. And so this can tell us about ancestry and it's another piece of evidence to support common ancestry. Uh, one of the other things that we use outside of just physical structures um, are genetic structures. So when we look at genes in different organisms, we can see um, one gene across multiple organisms or even multiple genes in one organism. Uh, we look at them in terms of their sequence, um, in terms of the regulatory parts, and if they have similarity, it suggests that the gene um, originated from the same previous place. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to code for the same protein, so just like homologous structures don't have to have the same function, that is true of the genes as well. So those things all give us evidence of common ancestry and why things are similar. Uh, but what we're going to look at next is how we get the diversity of life. So how we get the um, diverse characteristics of different organisms on the planet. 
So these four mechanisms will be the subject of our next parts, and these all contribute to branching from a shared ancestor. So if you think of back here, um, this picture, uh, the homologous structures give us evidence of these ancestry points, and the mechanisms explain how we get from these ancestry points to these diverse branches out on the outside. So that's what we'll come up with next. I hope that helped.